Madam, I see only non C screen actually. Please go ahead, Professor Shridhar. Please present your screen and uh, please start. Can I start? Good evening, now? everyone. Yes, so you can present your screen. A yeah. very good evening to everyone. By attending the webinar on machine learning, which is this title is authored by Dr. Sridhar, who is professor at the Department of Information Science and Technology, College of Engineering, Anna University, Chennai, and Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, who is associate professor at the Department of Information Science and Technology, College of Engineering, Anna University, Chennai. Over to you, sir and ma'am, a very warm welcome. Very warm welcome to you all, actually. So today, my agenda is to introduce you the exciting world of uh, machine learning. So machine learning is one of the most uh, important topic. So three most in-demand skills that is listed in monster.com is machine learning, natural language processing, and uh, deep learning. Uh, natural language processing is also a very important uh, area which can be part of uh, machine learning. And deep learning is uh, machine learning with uh, neural networks. So we can also consider deep learning as the sub area of machine learning. In short, machine learning is uh, one important topic. So that one needs to know now. So what is uh, machine learning? So machine learning is a learning process by which a system can improve its performance from your uh, experience. So that means uh, you can uh, say that machine learning is uh, one important uh, aspect for systems for Actually, 
can you able to see see the screen one i am not presentation is not visible so you can share the screen as you did earlier yes it is visible now. so could you please change it to full mode full screen can you see yes now? yes sir. yes sir. perfect machine learning is a learning process by which a system can improve its uh, performance from experience and uh, we have uh, lots of data that is available with the industry actually so the data is available in the form of uh, archive so we need to take uh, decisions so the importance uh, in uh, machine learning is that we have to take decisions from the data and uh, machine learning also helps the systems to improve its performance by learning from the old experiences so lots of uh, job avenues are there so some of the avenues are uh, data scientists uh, then machine learning uh, engineers then computational linguists so the growth of uh, the machine learning is a very amazing thing actually and it uh, spawns lots of uh, job opportunities so the global market is uh, expected to grow from uh, 8.43 billion in uh, 2019 to 117.19 billion by the year 2027 so lots of opportunities are there uh, not only for the computer science uh, proper students but also the people who are working in it and not only that there are lots of uh, non traditional jobs that involves persons like uh, linguistic computation persons so the jobs are projected to be worth almost 31 billion by 2024 and uh, we expect to grow by 40 percent over the six uh, year period actually and uh, you can see that uh, there is a 344 percent rate of growth uh, in uh, machine learning and the median salary is uh, almost uh, 1.46 lakhs uh, per year so lots of opportunities are there so what i am going to talk today is that i am just going to give you a broad view about uh, machine learning uh, i just want to uh, convey about uh, the basics of uh, machine learning what is uh, expected uh, to uh, uh, what is expected from you to know about machine learning so that you can pursue a career in this particular area basically uh, machine learning is uh, comes under the grand uh, old subject of artificial intelligence so machine learning is actually a small portion of uh, artificial intelligence where we are trying to learn uh, uh, from the data to generate the knowledge so you know very well uh, artificial intelligence is an area where we try to mimic the human intelligence in machines so it was an excited uh, it was a, a excited field which started from 1950s actually so initially it was uh, uh, the goals of artificial intelligence was very vast so it was uh, aimed at uh, the general intelligence where we were trying to develop uh, some sort of systems which uh, mimics the human intelligence lots of uh, goals are set actually people were trying to develop uh, the rule based systems uh, which are called the symbolic uh, systems actually many expert systems were developed uh, for some task but uh, after some time actually people realized that uh, those kind of things uh, are not uh, taking us to our uh, goals actually the reason is uh, we are not able to understand uh, lots of things about the human brain itself and when we say 
we are trying to mimic this in the machines actually so we found it's very difficult so we just moved on to the narrow intelligence or weak artificial intelligence where we don't expect too much from artificial intelligence other than that the system should do at least one task uh, whose performance is almost equal to the human performance if not better in this aspect only there is a resurgence uh, of uh, machine learning so where we are trying to what you say perform only one task of learning so learning is uh, one important aspect that characterizes the human brain actually we keep on learning the things actually so the question that is raised by many people is can machines learn so this was the question that was asked by many persons over many years actually and uh, some sort of a solution is given by what you say the statistical models so now in machine learning what we are trying to do is that we try to apply some statistics uh, we try to apply some sort of uh, data science concepts to learn all the things you can see very well deep learning is a small portion of machine learning actually where we try to do the same thing uh, with respect to what you say artificial neural networks so the difference between uh, the machine learning and the deep learning is that uh, machine learning is a vast umbrella which covers uh, many techniques from information theory statistics as well as uh, the neural network but whereas a uh, deep learning is uh, only about uh, what you say neural networks so how humans are learning so if you analyze our learning actually we learn many things uh, by rote learning we try to memorize we try to observe how others are doing so we try to read from the books so we try to learn many things and uh, we try to take some decisions and when we take the decisions actually what helps us is uh, what you say to understand our experience so our experience uh, so as a reference point for taking our decisions for example let us say if somebody is asking to do a small program in python means uh, if i had done lots of programming in python then from my memory i can glance and i can find out how i did that in the past actually so that is a precursor for what you say doing the current task so if you see every decisions comes out of experience so this uh, model only we try to promote in machine learning where the rough equivalent of experience is database so that means we have historical data so archival data we keep all the data and we try to learn from that particular database so machine learning is exactly fitting into this particular box actually so machine learning is nothing but a set of algorithms that is useful for what is a learning from your past historical data and it tries to generate a model so what is a model model can be an equation it can be a procedure it can be a rule actually or it can be some sort of uh, a methodology so that can help to learn so that means when we try to give some unknown data so based on the learning so based on the modeling technique it tries to generate some sort of an output so that is what we call as the prediction prediction of this and the models that does this prediction is what we are calling as the predictive modeling so predictive modeling is one of the most essential technique of the machine learning algorithms the formal definition of machine learning is given in this particular slide so that means uh, machine learning is nothing but the study of algorithms that improve the performance speed 
and it does only one task or it can be multiple tasks the task may be interrelated but it tries to improve the performance based on the experience the person who coined this word machine learning is samuel author samuel so what actually he has uh, uh, hypothesized is that can machines write program of its own actually without being explicitly programmed so that it can learn it what you see on the screen is nothing but the tom mitchell definition of what machine learning is all about so a well defined task is given by what you say the performance metrics the task one task preferably and lots of uh, data that is uh, experience uh, and the machine is automatically trying to learn from that and it tries to generate some sort of a model so you can see exactly how this approach is uh, there for machine learning there is no traditional kind of program exist for machine learning say for example if uh, somebody is asking you to write a small program for quadratic equation actually so you will start uh, writing uh, what is a in the conventional manner those kind of programs are not uh, expected for machine learning on the other hand what is required is that you will uh, write some program so which may be a artificial neural network so when it is exposed to the experience in the form of data means the program will start learning so it tries to make uh, a perfect fit of the training data so that means it tries to generate some sort of a concept that encompasses all the training instances so when it is able to learn something from that then we can say that it has learned something so this may be nothing but a sort of inductive or it can be a transductive experience so inductive means we try to generalize a concept from the samples so transduction means uh, maybe a transfer learning where we try to transport the knowledge for doing a particular task to a another program so it learns from the examples and once it has learned actually then we try to give some sort of a unknown instance and then we try to what you say see what sort of predictions we are getting so it's a generic one actually so that means it is not tied to any one particular data set it is not tied to one particular environment but on the contrary we are trying to generate some sort of a global program for learning from the examples so where machine learning can be put means fine there are many places where the human expertise does not exist actually you might have heard of uh, some telemedicine applications say for example uh, you can't put one uh, cardiologist in a remote place actually instead you can put a artificial intelligence program machine learning program over a server which gets uh, what you say data from the patients and it can give uh, some sort of decisions where the human expertise does not exist you can put uh, uh, the machine learning program for example the experience may be totally new navigation of certain things then in that case you can put uh, machine learning programs uh, human sometimes cannot be able to explain their expertise so in that case the machine learning can be put actually models can be customized say for example you can put a machine learning program there to customize a particular environment or the models can be based on the huge amounts of data for example let us say i may own a company which specializes in selling of certain products so maybe i can mine i can mine all the data and i can decide which product may go very well in future so these kind of things you can say fine i can do with statistics also 
exactly you can you are right you can do statistics also but the issue is statistics is applicable only for very small data sets but now we are living in an environment of big data where we have billions and billions of data that is generated actually on a daily basis so applying statistics to those concepts uh, require uh, uh, lots of difficulty in that case only the machine learning can really perform so machine learning techniques are always appreciated it's very fast it's very accurate it's very efficient and if data keeps on growing actually the efficiency increases as per our definition actually the performance of the system increases by more learning actually we can automate many applications so wherever the applications uh, involve too much human intervention then we can uh, put machine learning applications we have wide range of uh, real life applications so where no human intervention is required and it can handle multi dimensional data it can handle not only the text data but also what you say images videos etc etc so lots of confusion is there in the literature actually so machine learning is very closely related to data mining data analytics pattern recognition big data uh, i said already it's artificial intelligence and deep learning the differences are very subtle actually for example uh, the data mining and machine learning are subtly different because the outcome of machine learning is a model so all i want to do is i want to generate a model from my data but whereas in data mining and all i try to generate some sort of a knowledge data science is a umbrella term actually which uh, borders from the gathering of data to the deployment but whereas the analytics is only about the analysis of data part actually and the big data Uh, pertains to the amount of data that we have for the applications and pattern recognition is actually a narrow aspect of a particular domain where pattern tasks are being performed so we can say that uh, if you take the textbooks of all these items you will find there are many algorithms that are common so this may create a confusion why so many terms are there for uh, uh, referring to the same sort of algorithms the reason is as i said earlier machine learning uh, pertains to smaller data or big data but mostly it's algorithm oriented where our aim is to learn from the particular data and uh, we are not bothered too much about uh, the visualization or we are not bothered too much about uh, the deployment we are not bothered about the hidden information and we are not bothered about uh, what you say the domain also it's a very generic field actually where uh, we try to do all sorts of things these motivation uh, examples uh, should really impress you about uh, the importance of machine learning whether we like it or not actually our life is controlled by the machine learning for example uh, in gmail if any spam comes you make some report uh, then immediately it tries to learn from that particular mail then next time when a new mail comes actually based on the experience it automatically classifies that uh, to the spam mail or a normal mail similarly lots of uh, filtering the uh, things are happening for uh, virus checking object recognition machine learning algorithm can uh, understand the object actually say for example if you uh show camera to the audience actually it automatically identifies the faces actually that's a good example of uh, face reduction that is done by machine learning traffic predictions is another good area 
virtual personal assistants, right? So we have Alexa, Cortana, uh, we have Apple Siri. These are all very good examples of the personal assistants. Lots of tremendous development have taken place uh, in the form of translation. So we have uh, what is a translation mechanisms where uh, the source document is when one, one particular language and we try to convert that into another language. So these are some of the classical examples of uh, what is a speech recognition and translation. We have medicine, skin cancer uh, detection. Say for example, you can have your mobile camera, you can show it to your skin. It takes a snap, send it to the server across the channel that has got the machine learning algorithm that analyzes your image actually, and it tries to see whether skin cancer is there or not. These are all very good applications of telemedicines. The natural language processing, about language processing, sentiment analysis. Say for example, uh, I can uh, take a movie review and I can uh, go through all the comments. I can take YouTube, I can take all the comments actually, and I can find out what those reviews say actually. Say for example, I want to buy a particular product A, I can go through the comments, I can find the emotion that is behind the text actually. For example, whether the review is positive or negative or whether it's neutral, then based on that stars can be given. Maybe a five star product will influence many people to buy those sort of products additionally. These are the services and products. So you might already know Amazon, Netflix, Say, for example, in Amazon, if you buy one book, actually, immediately Amazon recommends you that uh, so many other people also have bought uh, these sort of books. Uh, and it says that the people who bought your item have also bought these sort of additional items. So it's a recommendation system. Similarly, Netflix recommends uh, new movies based on your journal. Then lots of products you see in the advertisement like Alexa, Cortana, these are all nothing but the products, services. Google Translate is another service actually, which works on machine learning. And in Uber, Ola, so good uh, pathfinding in case of traffic, if any alternative routes needs to be taken or all machine learning programs only. Deep Go can play Go in a perfect manner. So that means many machine learning programs have started learning chess. It has learned a Go kind of games actually. So many things are there. Deep Mind, Deep Fake. These are some wonderful services. If you Google the net, actually, you will find uh, what is a thousands and thousands of products actually, which uh, actually use uh, the machine learning. Fine, coming to the technical part, what is uh, uh, the types of uh, learning we are going to do as part of machine learning means these are the things you will talk about. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised and reinforcement. Supervised learning, immediately you can picture, you have a teacher, you have a student, the teacher is giving lots of uh, examples to the student, the student starts learning those concepts actually. Once uh, they have learned it, the teacher is uh, testing the student by giving some questions and immediately if the student is able to answer it, it reflects in the performance. This is what a typical supervised learning is all about. So that means we have lots of labeled data. So we give those uh, data to the programs the program starts learning from the data. It tries to generate the concepts. And based on that, uh, it tries to generate some sort of a model. Classification programs, regression programs are great examples of uh, what you say supervised learning. So in classification, I can give lots of images. Maybe I want to find the dog images that are present in the animal images. 
So that is nothing but a classical example of uh, supervised learning. And uh, regression, the same thing only. The difference is numbers prediction, where in regression, I predict uh, the continuous variable, but whereas uh, in classification and all, I try to predict some sort of labels. What will happen if there is no supervisor is available to give examples? If that is the case means you have the unsupervised learning where the learning program itself tries to learn by using trial and error methods. So that means by using trial and error, it tries to group it. Periodic table is a good example of clustering where we try to group the molecules based on the common properties. The exercise that we are giving to our school students for grouping taxonomy kind of things are good examples of supervised. Semi-supervised is a situation where you have very limited labeled data set actually, but you have lots of uh, unlabeled set means you try to learn from the labeled set and you try to extend that knowledge to others. Reinforced learning is a learning actually where you don't have any luxury of uh, the labeled data. So in that case, actually, so you have to, what you say, learn from the environment by exactly. rewards actually. And based on that, the learning is taking place. Yeah. So this is a process. So this is called a CRISP process where you try to understand your business you try to find where the machine learning is required. Then you try to extract the data. So the data may be a structured data. That means it's available in the form of uh, Excel sheets, or it may be in the form of uh, uh, relational databases, or it can be a semi-structured data or yeah, unstructured data. So you try to learn uh, those sort of data. Then you try to pre-process it and you try to generate models by using the machine learning algorithms. And once you generate the model, you try to evaluate the model based on your performance metrics. And you try to see whether the model is good enough for deployment. So once you deploy, the process will go on daily. Lots of new data will come in. The system will start learning actually. For example, you may have a call center. You may have some complaints coming to you. You can put a machine learning algorithm. Maybe you will try in your algorithm for classifying the complaints means slowly it will start performing. Slowly it will improve the performance and one day it will exhibit the intelligence like the human beings. So once you take the data actually, then you have to pre-process it. So what is uh, the need for pre-processing means uh, uh, the data that you are getting may be a bad data or dirty data. So it's a, just a technical term actually which, signifies, which uh, signifies that the data that you have extracted has got lots of problems. For example, in this small table, you see John, date of birth is not there. So this is called a missing data. For example, in, uh, let us say, the internet, you are uh, encountering a survey. So you don't want to put all the data, right? Say, for example, if there is any privacy questions like what is your salary, will you really give that data? You just escapes actually from that particular question to some other question. So that means the resultant is a missing data. So if the data is bad, actually, the quality of the model that is generated will be very bad. So the model is as good as your data. So pre-processing is one technique, actually, where you try to remove these sort of uh, problems so that your data becomes a normal data. So you have fantastic algorithms available. In our book in chapter two, we have covered all the things that needs to be done as part of machine learning to solve these sorts of problems. So this is what the classification is all about. I'm taking the labeled data. So I'm giving that to my classification algorithm. So it's a machine learning algorithm. It tries to generate a model 
and once i give the new test data then it tries to generate some sort of labels fine so far i just talked about in the overall view can we see some of the L algorithms example so i am planning to show some of the examples here like lazy learner so that means uh, how a fundamental primitive machine algorithm can be designed and how algorithm can be designed using the probability concept and decision tree methods okay so first i will take a very simple algorithm called knn algorithm it stands for k nearest neighbor algorithm so k is nothing but an integer actually which tells how many what you say neighbors are there for example in this diagram actually i am giving a question actually and uh, this is the space where you have uh, lots of uh, what you say training data is there so you try to see uh, the closest neighbor for example if i say k equal to 3 means i am trying to find the three closest neighbor and i try to see what their opinion is all about so that means learning can be done by majority voting so that means i will take the majority vote and i will try to generate my result actually based on the majority in case if i have numbers actually i will take the average of those numbers okay for example let us say this is the training data so where uh, the performance of the student is given in the form of cgpa assessment project submitted and result and the question that is being asked is suppose let us say if a new student comes in trip as uh, what you say cgpa is 6.1 assessment is 40 and the number of project he has submitted 5 means uh, can i say the student has passed or failed so this is the question i will be asking so this is where the machine learning is coming so you can visualize you can have a server where this program is uh, maybe a query is given like this and you may have to what is a classify this instance to any one of the class so here what are the classes it's nothing but pass or fail actually these are the two class labels so how to do that i have to find the neighbor so what is the meaning of neighbor that is nothing but how close we are what is the mathematics equivalent of close means it is nothing but distance measure i take the euclidean distance and i try to find the distance between my test query and all the data instances that is present in your thing and you try to find the distances actually so my problem says neighbor is 3 so i am trying to sort this out actually and i try to find the closest neighbor so now you can see very well all my closest neighbor says fail so that means uh, this student is unfortunately is failed because the majority says fail so that means i will assign this class this instance to the class called fail so this is how it works you may have doubt whether this will really work or not yes it works actually if you give lots of instances of data in terms of millions actually suddenly your program is more accurate say for example you can compare yourself with uh, your three neighbor or five neighbor seven neighbor or it can be 100 uh, neighbors or it can be 10000 neighbors also so that means uh, more and more uh, computational power you have the more predictive your results have got okay so this is what we are calling as the knn algorithm so you see there is no parameter learning there is no concept involved just to see your neighbor and declare your results actually so that is why we call this as lazy learning so that means lazy means uh, so we are not proactively trying to do anything but instead we just wait for the instances to come actually and based on that we take decisions right so in our book we have given lots of uh, what is a examples like this 
this is nothing but a covid example where you see the data set is available like this you have lots of attributes symptoms are there actually so now the question is uh, suppose if uh, any patient comes with these sort of uh, symptoms uh, how do we say or how do we classify that into either the positive class or negative class so you can see lots of case studies like this so this is how it works for example i am coming uh, with these symptoms means what you will do is you will try to find uh, my closest and then uh, i will take the majority and then i will try to what to say classify that so on the right hand side you see k equal to 2 i am increasing the neighbor to 3 4 5 and i am trying to find uh, what is a my neighbors class and i am trying to take the majority of uh, those sort of things right so this is the case study and this is uh, the third case study which you can refer so that means uh, whether the student will get uh, the job offer or not so that means uh, again i will get the query and i will try to find uh, the closest neighbor and based on that i will proceed right so this is called decision tree learning uh, can i request uh, vijay lakshmi madam yes, sir and yes yeah sir previous slide sir so this is actually the uh, the third uh, case study we have we are showing here um, we have a sample data set like this uh, so it is about the student's performance we need to predict whether a student will get a job or not okay so for this kind of data uh, we can also use another uh, model like uh, sir the next slide we can go for a machine learning model like uh, decision tree learning um, so this decision tree learning model is actually a supervised uh, predictive model um, the uh, what it will do is it will it is not like a lazy learner what you have seen in the previous uh, case study Uh, but this is this decision tree learning model will infer it will be uh, doing an inductive inference so from the training data set it will infer a model so first it will construct a model in the form of a tree structure so uh, that is what shown here um, so now this is one example of a decision tree where the root node is actually the attribute called assessment and then um the the rules can be inferred you can actually infer from the decision tree as as such, as shown in the uh, below here you can see here if the student is getting an assessment mark of greater than or equal to 50 then we are actually classifying the student to uh, get a pass mark in the sub, in the subject or uh, else if the mark is less than the assessment mark is less than 50 then we go for one more test so uh, the assignment it based on the other test called the assignment and if the assignment is equal to yes then we say that uh, the student can get a pass in that course if the assignment if he has not submitted the assignment then we say that the the student is going to fail in that course so from the data set whatever we have we are going to have a tree model so based on the decision tree model uh given any test instance we can just walk through this tree and then we can have a prediction of whether we are going to uh have a, whether the student is going to pass that particular subject or fail in that particular subject so this is actually in uh, how a decision tree will work so so next slide next slide so uh, so this decision tree there are actually three uh, algorithms by which you can construct a decision tree uh, we have a c4.5 uh, algorithm then we have an uh, uh, id3 algorithm and then we have an kath algorithm so the kath algorithm is a classification and regression tree algorithm this kath decision tree algorithm can uh, work for a classification problem as well as for a regression problem so for the previous data set whatever we have uh, shown for that we are actually constructing a decision tree so in each decision tree um, in each iteration we get a decision tree like this so the model actually constructs the final decision tree in two iterations 
So the cart algorithm uses a attribute called uh, uses a measure called Guinea index, and then it constructs the decision tree. So once you have the decision tree, you you can give a test instance, and then you can make a prediction of whether a particular student will have have a will get a job offer or not. So this is actually with the decision tree learning model. So next, slide. this is called a regression actually. So I was telling you the difference between the classification and the regression. Regression, what it does is it tries to predict a number. For example, if I want to predict uh, the car brand, it's classification problem. But on the other hand, uh, if uh, we want to predict the price, it's called the regression problem. So now you see this is what uh, it is. So data set, I want to predict how the sales will be in the seventh week and ninth week means then I'm trying to apply a regression algorithm. In school mathematics, you would have studied about uh, uh, the uh, linear regression model where I'm trying to find uh, uh, a line that passes through all this data. So that means I'm trying to fit a line of good fit actually. This is a closed problem and these are the formulas that are available. And once I apply this formula, I'm getting a formula. So that is nothing but a model. Once I find the formula, then all I have to do is I will substitute the value of uh, X as uh, seven and nine, and I will try to find uh, the y that is nothing but uh, the what you say the predictive variable that i'm going to talk about this kind of uh, model is also called as the machine learning model we have some fantastic uh, case studies here so one is uh, the flight ticket uh, price prediction so you know very well these are the attributes that are there for example uh, airline date of journey so you have a source city destination city so you see all these attributes so you can collect all these details and you can put it into a table and you can apply the regression algorithm for making the prediction of the ticket price you know very well the price uh, will vary from day to day basis actually so for these sort of things you can really use these sort of algorithms this is called the boston city uh, house uh, prediction algorithm price prediction algorithm where these are some of the features that are available actually and based on that, we try to find the price of the house, actually. So the key point which I want to stress here is that the data. If you have lots of data and if the data is of, uh, of, of uh, very high quality, then your prediction will be really good. This is called support vector machines. Uh, you might have heard this uh, term many times. Uh, say, for example, I want to classify uh, one objects that is given as plus and another object as uh, small bubbles. All I will do is I will construct a line. So in three dimension, it's called a plane. In multi-dimension, it's called hyperplane. I will try to put a line so that I can classify this uh, class from this class. So for example, if I want to compare two persons, Sam and Tom, I will take attributes like height and weight. I can put it into a two-dimensional graph where Tom will become one point and Sam will become another point. Actually, all I have to do is I have to fit a line so that uh, it classifies one instance from another. So the beauty of SVM is that sometimes uh, you need to put other sort of curves actually to classify. In other words, it's non-linear relations for example let us say uh, i predict that your expenditure will increase if your salary increases but on the contrary it it is actually down and it keeps on changing every month means it becomes a, a non-linear problem actually in that case the prediction becomes very very difficult for those sort of things the support vector machines are used for example you can see that uh, this is a uh, uh, yeah, sort of a bolt classification uh, mechanisms. So where uh, uh, the production unit has produced lots of bolt actually, but not 
sorry this is about uh, uh, cancer detection so that means uh, you try to find uh, 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 the breast cancer where you try to get all these attributes and based on that you are trying to classify that into the malignant or what to say benign kind of things right so this is uh, uh, very popular and uh, another popular uh, technique is uh, artificial neural networks uh, you might have heard of that lots of uh, what you say um, um, uh, lots of uh, excitement is around this uh, field of uh, neural networks neural networks just approximate our human brain actually uh, so we model the neurons uh, mathematically like this so we try to get uh, the input we put some sort of an activation function to what you say simulate the other neurons all neurons works in a perfect parallel manner to get things done so the recent development in neural network is what we are calling as the convolutional neural networks this uh, forms the what you say the core of uh, deep learning uh, so here uh, the beauty here is that you don't have to extract the features like we did in our previous slides in all our previous slides we fantastically extracted all the features and put that into a nice table and then we trained it unfortunately there are many applications uh, where the attributes are very difficult to obtain actually for example if you take the emotion recognition problem uh, if i cry how you will extract the features or in other words what sort of features can characterize the human brain so those sort of things are very difficult to obtain actually so for those sort of thing the solution is automatically learning the features that is what the convolutional neural network does so lots of uh, what is a fun around this area so where people are trying to give lots of images Uh, to do the object recognitions for example if you give uh, uh, as uh, in my earlier slide says if you try in this convolution networks with uh, lots of uh, dog brands and uh, uh, cat brands actually and if i give you a unknown uh, photograph of your cat actually it can classify and then it will label that as the cat so these sort of things are becoming very very popular in our book actually we use this for numbers recognition so this is emerging as a de facto hello program in machine learning so where we have lots of numbers like this and we try to take these numbers as the input actually and the convolution neural network tries to learn and it tries to say whether this is zero or one so these sort of programs are actually used by the us government for classifying the zip codes of uh, our postal letters it can also be used for uh, automatic check processing where the numbers can be what to say identified using these sort of programs Bayesian is another beautiful schools of thought actually so you have lots of programs that are available uh, as part of this so this is uh, the bayesian principle so the logic is very simple if you have the prior probability you have the likelihood given the evidence you can easily find the posterior probability and you can classify one case study i can give is say for example if the probability is uh, given like this and if i want to predict uh, 2,2 whether i have to put this uh, instance as part of class c1 or c2 means all i will do is i will compute the prior probability i can compute the likelihood and by multiplying the prior probability and this likelihood i can find the posterior probability and uh, maximum likelihood so that means i will try to compare these two so you can see very well c2 is a maximum therefore i will just assign this class to that particular things in other words uh, uh, bayesian model are proving to be a very extremely useful tool for prediction actually because in real world we have lots of uncertainty whenever there is an uncertainty we resort to the probability only so we use uh, these sort of mathematics to generate the models already 
Bayesian classifier is proven to be a effective tool for classifying what is a normal males and spam males. So you can find lots of details uh, in our book related to this. So shall I? Yeah. 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 Um, so this is actually um, uh, about the graphical model. Um, actually, this, uh, this, is, this model is based on the Marco process and it works on the uh, uh, temporal data. So uh, the thing is that this popular model will actually uh, have, uh, will work with the hidden states and with the observation states. So uh, supposing if you want to find out the performance of a student in an exam, based on the observation on the student. Uh, we see that a student is happy or worry or blink or uh, fine. So based on the observation, we want to find out whether the student has uh, performed good or moderate or he's going to fail in that exam. So uh, based on the observation sequence, if you want to find out the hidden uh, fact, then you can go for a uh, graphical probabilistic graphical model. Um, the popular, uh, Graphical model is an uh, hidden Markov model. Um, so in the hidden Markov model, you can actually um, uh, work with three kinds of problems like decoding problem, evaluation problem, and then learning problem. Uh, sir, can you please, the next slide. So uh, here actually we are uh, 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 seeing that for the previous uh, uh, HMM, we are uh, applying a uh, decoding problem using the Viterbi algorithm. We are trying to predict uh, what would be the hidden state. So the observation sequence is shown here. Uh, here you can see that the observation sequences on the student is happy, blink, fine, and then fine. Based on the observation sequence, we are trying to find out the hidden states. Um, so the hidden states are uh, computed as good, moderate, and then good, good, which means that he has performed well in his exam. So uh, we can predict the sequence of hidden state using this uh, HMM model using uh, one kind of problem is a decoding problem that is shown in this slide. So the red arrow shows that how the student has actually performed in that exam. So the hidden sequence can be predicted from the observation sequence. Uh, then another important or very popular model is an ensembling learning model. Uh, you can see from this picture that uh, there are a few persons who are, uh, you can see that they, those are blind persons. Um, uh, they are trying to predict what that animal is. So one is actually saying that an elephant is looking like a big snake after seeing the trump of that uh, elephant. And one, one person is looking into the uh, trunk of the, uh, the leg of that elephant. He's saying that it looks like a stump. So each one is giving its, their own opinion of how that, what is that animal. All are blind persons. So ensemble learning is like uh, instead of uh, using the uh, prediction from one uh, weak classifier, we can actually combine the predictions of many weak classifiers and come up with a good uh, prediction. That is the idea of why we go for an ensemble learning. And we have many techniques that comes under ensemble, ensemble learning and it has been covered in that book. Now we will talk about the clustering that is unsupervised learning. So you can see that there is no supervisor available. All you are giving the unlabeled data. So what the program does is it tries to group. Uh, so it forms a cluster. So you can see that uh, this is a cluster of dogs. This is a cluster of uh, what you say cats. So how to do that is very simple. Uh, so I'm taking uh, the data and I'm trying to find the closeness. Again, it's nothing but the distance measure. I'm trying to find the distance between zero to zero. Distance between the object to the same object is uh, uh, not required, it's zero. So it's given as hyphen here. I'm trying to find the distance between zero to one, zero to two, zero to three. And you see, you are finding the minimum and whichever is minimum is being clustered. So that means this is the minimum. So therefore one and two, I am clustering together. I'm continuing the iterations and I'm continuing till you get uh, all the clusters. This is what we call as the dendrogram. This example can be a very good application also. Say for example, I want to put the ATM in my uh, area means if I assume that all people go to the nearest ATM center, 
I can take the what you say location of every person as uh, GPS uh, what you say uh, coordinates x and y. So this can be the coordinate, and I find the cluster. Say for example, let us say zero one two or living closer actually means I can put one ATM center there actually so that uh, it will benefit all the people actually. So this is the real beauty of machine learning algorithm where we can easily, what you say, solve a big complicated problems as a simple instances. This is reinforcement. Reinforcement means you don't have any label data. Suppose let us say you landed into a place with which you don't have any familiarity, how you will do that? For example, this is called the gambling uh, arm slot. Say, for example, if I use this machine, I do not know how much money will come. It may be $5, it may be $10, it can be $1 means how I will do. So I will simply explore it. For example, there are 10 restaurants available in my neighborhood. So which one I should eat means I will try to explore which one is proven to be better. So that is what reinforcement learning is all about, where we try to find the rewards from the environment actually. And if the reward is more, we try to do the same action. So that means uh, the action is getting reinforced. So all I am trying to do is that I'm taking a game like this and uh, I try to reach the goal actually. So I want to find out which action is uh, better. For example, this is home, this is school, these are all coins. I want to find the best part so that I can get the maximum coin means uh, this is nothing but robotic exploration. I will simply explore. You have standard techniques available like Monte Carlo simulations. You try to simulate all the path and you try to find out which path is uh, very effective and you will choose those sort of things. So robotic path planning like Uber, uh, Ola, for example, if there is more traffic, you can find the alternative path or all nothing but uh, the concepts are derived from reinforcement. So without learning, it can learn to play games like chess or go and it beat uh, the lead all the expert in that uh, go game actually with just eight hours of training. So that is the beauty of these uh, programs. Oh. Active learning, um, this is actually a semi-supervised learning uh, technique. Uh, whatever we have already seen, we have seen supervised learning, we have seen reinforcement learning, we have seen unsupervised learning. Active learning is a semi-supervised learning where uh, this kind of learning model will be suitable when you have a huge amount of data, unlabeled data. So we don't, we cannot expect that all data are labeled. When, when we have large amount of data that are generated, in different sources like internet or from YouTube videos. Uh, so we have now we have a huge amount of data that are generated every day. And we cannot expect all da data to be labeled. So we have many unlabeled data. So if you have unlabeled data, then uh, classification would be actually uh, uh, cl classification would be actually difficult. So uh, in order to make it label, you can apply this active learning method model. So uh, what this active learner will do is he will use a fraction of that is semi supervised means that it is actually using a fraction of human knowledge also. So uh, active learner will choose the unlabeled data instances from a pool of data instances. Um, and then it, the, he will uh, query with a teacher or an oracle to find out the label for the instance. So here you can see that this active learner is trying to find out the label for mango one. So the teacher is replying that it is a right mango. Similarly, for mango five, the teacher is replying with uh, unripe. Okay, so that's mango two. When he is um, uh, he's labeling, he's asking for the label. The teacher is giving that it is medium right. So uh, from it is not that all the all unlabeled data would be learned by an active learner. An active learner will uh, randomly select unlabeled data instances and then he will try to learn from a teacher. And then he will load it into the no, um, into the knowledge base. That is to the he will add it to the training data set. So once uh, the unlabeled data or uh, labeled and added to the training data set, from that it will again learn to find out the labels for 
other unlabeled data instances. That is the idea of uh, this active learning model. So next slide. And then uh, in association learning, this is actually very important. Um, the, these uh, active learning or association learning comes under the uh, rule-based learning models. So rule-based learning models will uh, try to represent the knowledge in the form of if-then rules. So the idea of this learning model is to find out the uh, relationship that exists between the data or to find out the association or the correlations in the data or to find out the or to find out the patterns that exist in the data. So given the data instance, it is trying to find out the uh, rules, association rules. So when you form the association rules, uh, rules will be in the form of if then. So here you can see that uh, this is one rule like notebooks. Um, uh, that is a person buying notebooks will also uh, uh, try to buy gel pens. So the left hand side is A and the right hand side is B. So we want to find out how far this association rule is uh, supported or how far this association rule has gotten confidence. So support or confidence are going to be an important measure to find out the strength of the rule. So the strength of the association rule we are extracting from the uh, data set. So that is the idea of this association, mining the association rules. So you have a lot of algorithms like uh, a priori algorithm or um, frequent pattern growth algorithm using which we can find out the association rules and we can find out the strength of the tool using this measures like support, confidence, or lift. All those are discussed in that book. So these are the key features uh, of uh, our book, actually. We use algorithmic approach. Uh, so we try to explain the concepts in terms of algorithms. We used very minimal mathematics. Uh, in machine learning, either you have code-oriented books or lots of mathematics oriented books so we try to avoid mathematics as much as possible we try to give lots of layman examples to understand the things and we try to cover almost all university syllabuses actually we try to provide simple explanation to complex topics like clustering support vector machines genetic algorithm artificial neural networks and deep learning. Uh, we have given a lab manual as part of the appendices. We designed around some 25 programs actually, so that uh, you can experiment those programs that will give you the fundamental idea and confidence uh, for doing the things. Uh, in the appendices, we give Python fundamentals. Uh, we try to give introduction to all Python packages like NumPy, uh, Pandas, uh, Seaborn, scikit learn etc uh, with that you can learn all the uh, lab experiments that is given as part of the lab manual we have given crosswords as well as the word search so that uh, you will have some sort of a motivation as well as the fun in trying to learn some important jargons that is uh, uh, necessary to understand machine learning lots of uh, qr codes we have given actually so the book actually has got only 496 pages. So nearly some 200 pages of content and nearly some 150 pages of lab content are given as part of the QR code, which you can download. You can get the benefits from this. So we try to cover as many applications as possible, actually. So we have put all the things in the form of a table so that uh, you can see uh, uh, some of the interesting developments that have taken place uh, in these things. These are the experiments uh, we have given. So around 25 experiments. And the Python is our primary language for uh, implementing the concepts. So we are not using R, we are not using any other thing. Uh, only for the last 25th experiment, we used uh, Keras to make things uh, simpler. So we give uh, appendix where we try to explain these packages briefly actually. So with that you can implement these experiments so that you can have some sort of a view. We tried our level best to, to cover all the syllabuses actually. So this book is uh, well covering all AACT uh, and uh, most of the universities. Uh, when the university is offering machine learning as uh, an associated course with artificial intelligence and neural networks, 
in that case the coverage will not be 100% it will be slightly less than 100% for example if uh, a university is offering a course like genetic algorithms and machine learning means our book will not be 100% compliant but we can give you the assurance that we try our level best to cover uh, as many uh, concepts of uh, machine learning as possible so we tried our level best uh, i am in academics for more than 30 years uh, madam is in academics for more than 20 years actually we try to uh, develop a content uh, uh, so that the students will get uh, benefit from uh, this particular subject so we also have done other other books like uh, digital image processing and uh, design and analysis of algorithms and this is our view uh, that uh, machine learning is also one of the complex subject which uh, many students find it very difficult to understand but actually in principle this subject can be taught with lots of examples which we tried our level best to provide as part of our book i hope that uh, this uh, webinar is very useful to you and uh, we also uh, expect our book will be what to say utilized by you so that you can get uh, uh, a good career ahead of you wish you all the best thank you so much dr sridhar and dr vijalakshmi thank you. now let's see if we let's see if we have some questions in the chat box All the participants can post their questions there, if any. Any questions, uh, we are ready to answer. In the book, uh, we have given our email address, we have given our website also. So if you have any query, you please uh, post the questions and we will uh, uh, try to explain the concept to you. So there is one question in the chat box. To start learning the artificial intelligence in machine learning, how to learn or how to start? Kindly give your view. A basic uh, idea about artificial intelligence may be useful, but it's not an absolute necessity. You can uh, straight away start with machine learning. Uh, yeah, uh, knowledge of probability, linear algebra, and um, uh, some mathematics concept like optimization would really help in understanding machine learning better uh, but uh, it's not an absolute necessity you can uh, straight away uh, start with our book actually we have given a chapter uh, where we try to give the basic fundamentals actually so with that you can start uh, a little bit of Python would really help actually, so that uh, you can uh, start implementing the programs actually. Uh, if you are comfortable with the algorithmic point of view, you can really understand the algorithms actually straight away. Numerical examples are given plenty actually, so that uh, you can uh, work out those things and you can uh, really work it out. To be very frank actually, not much uh, knowledge is required actually uh, because we have written this book actually with a view for other branch students so we not only aim at uh, the computer science and it major but also we expect that this course would become very popular so the other branch students uh, like mechanical engineering manufacturing also will take these sort of uh, subjects so we have kept the mathematics to the minimal so I'm very sure that it will be uh, 
it can be straight away picked by anybody thank you sir thank you Another. for image processing which is best machine learning or deep learning as i said earlier actually in machine learning feature engineering is manual so you have to extract features manually and then you have to construct a table and then only you will go for vision related problems but in deep learning you don't have that kind of moderation uh, straight away you can give and deep learning is a better place actually if your work is on images or video actually so okay, machine yes, learning is better See. if uh, the data set is uh, text or numbers but i recommend the deep learning the two cnn yes yes how to determine which machine learning algorithm is best for the particular application that you will do in model evaluation so there is no guidance there is no rule uh, which says which model is better so what you have to do is you have to apply the multiple methods actually and then you have to see which model comes out uh, fantastically for example in classification you have something called uh, roc receiver operated characteristic curve which plots uh, the performance of multiple classifiers and then that you have to find out uh, and based on that uh, study you can choose uh, the best model for your particular case for example let us say uh, you want to classify a classifier a particular classifier may give you a wrong result actually while the another classifier may give the right result also because if there is a small change in the input actually the output will vary a lot actually so this kind of problems are existing because classifiers are basically unstable in nature so uh, the straight forward answer is uh, better you try multiple things madam and you try to find which model is suitable for your data most sir i saw one question which model should be used if objects of the new classes and uh, yeah this kind of things are called incremental learning actually madam spoke about active learning actually so active learning is what required if your data set keeps on changing for example in a neural network if you change your training data again you have to go for the training phase actually so you can avoid that if you are going for uh, what you say Uh, uh, active learning kind of things, madam. Anything you want to say? No, sir. We can actually use the same supervised learning, the same thing. Yeah. Really. So there is another question. How uh, is artificial intelligence? Yeah, artificial and machine learning DL is related. To, uh, robotics uh, bothers uh, about vision. So whenever there is a vision, you have a scope for uh, deep learning as well as uh, machine learning actually. so uh, similarly for robotic path selection and all uh, comes under uh, reinforcement learning we have algorithms like q learning sarsa and all which will help uh, the robotic uh, navigation so if it is vision uh, it's uh, more machine learning and deep learning Sir, is it satisfy your question? Uh, Python is suitable, sir. Uh, so your question is uh, which language is uh, better apart from C and Python? Python is more than sufficient, actually. So with Python, uh, you can get the maximum out of. Uh, Uh, machine learning because uh, python uh, as natural has become natural choice for uh, uh, machine learning actually so you can start learning pythons uh, and um, you can start learning all the packages actually 
as i said earlier you need to master linear algebra you need to master probability you require some calculus and optimizations uh, apart from that uh, a little bit of algorithmic knowledge is required uh, you can become a perfect uh, artificial intelligence engineer with this skill set so this answer satisfies you yes sir machine learning books will give you all necessary fundamentals it covers a python it covers the necessary basics as well as the algorithmic view of machine learning any other questions from the audience heavy sir actually the impact of artificial intelligence is very heavy because now we see already see some uh, impact uh, we see uh, ola uber etc charting new paths so we already see things like uh, alexa cortana siri kind of things so in translation we see revolution actually in earlier days actually the translation was not used to be very good actually now we are getting performance almost closer to the human uh, performance actually similarly uh, object recognition we are able to recognize the human faces with a more percentage and uh, uh, it's going to a yeah, advanced state where we are talking about the driverless cars actually right when we are prepared to give our life uh, to a machine actually in car driving you can imagine how much uh, we have started trusting the artificial intelligence systems so its impact is going to be very heavy and uh, the people who lack ml uh, uh, may uh, may lose some uh, technical edge in future because already we are talking about uh, iot we are already started using uh, smartphones so we should also know the good as well as the bad aspect of machine learning uh, say for example sometimes uh, somebody can hack you somebody can uh, try to take your profile and start misusing actually so you can avoid all sorts of things for that some sort of an awareness is required so definitely there is lot of impact uh, in our daily life Are you satisfied, sir? Uh, are there any more questions from the participants? So thank you very much. Uh, so if you have any questions, you please uh, send it to us. We have given our email. We have given our website. You please uh, contact us. Uh, we are ready to help you in all manner. Uh, in on uh, that is under our purview. Thank you so much, Dr. Sridhar and Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. Thank you. And thank you thank to you. all the participants for attending. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for giving this opportunity, Madam. Actually, thank you very thank much. Thank you.
So we can 